everyone, welcome back to this new video in which we're going to finally exploit the SSRF that we found on the export feature using the injected value in the username. Let's get started. So SSRF to local file read Hassan Khan. Let's uh, open it. So it says here SSRF to LFI. So he is trying to inject across a scripting and then he tried to inject a file like a script using uh, Ajax, but I don't think it would work because of the same origin policy. This one didn't work either. File etc passwd didn't work for us. He tried the AWS instance metadata mentioned it above, and it's through the location header. Oh, okay, okay, okay. This seems interesting. So like we could uh, host our own file that will force the backend server, which is trying to fetch our page, to redirect to whatever page we want. So in this case, we could redirect it to um, file and then fetch that file for us. This might work. And if everything goes well, we should get something like this in the PDF. Okay, let's give it a try. So to do that, we need to just grab that code and let's uh, put it in a file. So that would be location. Actually, let's just leave it HTTP localhost just to verify that our exploit works because we know that it works for uh, fetching uh, the page on localhost and then we can build upon that. So let's call it proof of concept.php and quit. So now we just need to host it on the internet and serve it. So I'm going to use Python and I'm also going to use ngrok. So let's host that file locally. I'm going to choose a local port 8888. And in a new tab, I'm going to use ngrok and expose that port externally. So now it's only a matter of taking that value and put it in our iframe source and then append proof of concept.php. Let's send that. And if we go back to our PDF and refresh it, if everything goes well, we should see the directory listing, but we don't. All right, we need to troubleshoot a little bit. So first of all, I'm going to verify if I indeed got a ping to our file. Yes. And we've successfully served it. But there is a problem with our file, I guess. Now let's go back and instead of like exporting it, let's just uh, load it locally. So here the page loads on our own browser and not on the server's browser and uh, see what we get. Oh, so we get a file proof of concept.php getting downloaded and it's not um, like evaluated server side. Well, let's uh, see the request closer. So I'm going to refresh it once more. And if I go to burp proxy, where is it? Yeah, here it is. So my browser is trying to fetch that file from the ngrok URL. Saying here, it's getting cached. What's happening here? Let me just uh, send this to the, the repeater and remove that if modified since. Hopefully this would get back our file. Yes, we get it. Uh, okay, 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 okay. I see now. So we have a content type application octet stream. When the server gets that, it downloads the file. It doesn't like evaluate this PHP as PHP code. 
So we actually need to host that file on a PHP server, like an Apache PHP server. I'm going to leverage Docker to do that. It's really simple. First of all, I'm just going to verify that I have Docker. So instead of serving it using Python, I'm going to serve it using Docker. So Docker PS, just to verify if we have Docker running. Yes, we do have it running. I'm going to look for a PHP Apache Docker image. So that would be PHP Apache Docker. Click on the first link. Hopefully it contains what we want. Uh, maybe this one, PHP dash Apache. Okay, so it says here we can pull it from here and we can see that the documentation that might contain additional information like uh, where it is hosted. If we go to environment variables, we can set the uh, web document root to be something different from slash app, but I'm just going to leave it right there. Now the idea is to host my file, the proof of concept dot PHP, this one. Um, what I want to host it on port 8888 uh, on a PHP server using this container. We're just going to run it all at once in one command. We want to remove the container once it's finished and we want to define a volume that's pointing to our current directory and we want to map it to slash app. This is where the container hosts the files. We want to expose the port 8888 and map it to port 80 where the container is hosting the website. Okay, let's give it a spin and hope it works. So it's doing its thing. Seems that it's working. So let's just uh, try to curl the HTTP localhost on port 8888. And we want to grab the proof of concept.php. If we click on OK or hit enter, we indeed see that we have a redirection to HTTP localhost as we've expected. And we have something in the logs. Perfect. So it's working as expected. We still have our backend server here or ngrok exposed HTML uh, page. So what I can do is simply go to the uh, profile generation feature. So that was under slash exports.php and hope that the server would give us access. Uh, control R to force the reload. If you're interested in learning more about these techniques, if you are interested in pursuing an ethical hacker career, then I encourage you to head over to academy.thehackerish.com. There you will find online courses that you can enroll to and just find a suitable course for you. It should give you a great start. And we get it. Okay, now we're getting somewhere. We have the file or the page of the server itself, but we don't want that. What we want is file. We want the etc pass wd file. Can we do that? Okay, so if we save it with the power of volumes in Docker, cross our fingers and refresh the page and we normally should see something. Yes, we get it. We have access to the etc pass wd file. That's really cool. And in the next video, we're going to dig deeper and find a way to leverage this vulnerability to get a foothold on the system. As always, stay curious, keep learning, and go find some bugs.